All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in again to your local locksmith, Urban Lock and Key, coming at you with another video. Today we are on site of a 2006, uh, excuse me, Chevy, Chevy Impala. We are doing a lost key process for this vehicle. Uh, the primary reason for this video today is to demonstrate how to remove the ignition lock somewhere out of the vehicle <clears throat> i've already got it out but i'm gonna go through a couple of processes to explain to you first thing you want to do though before you do anything is disconnect the battery because in order to remove the cylinder you have to turn into you have to turn it to the on position <clears throat> um once you remove the battery you want to take the steering column shroud off. There is on the left hand side, right up in this area where the bottom plastic is, it's a T25 Torx bit. Just one screw that holds it in place. You can go ahead and remove that. Now, <clears throat> there's also the tilt lever. You can remove that as well beforehand. All you do is pull it straight out it comes out of the socket that way you can remove the bottom shroud without any hassle <clears throat> um, one other thing you want to do the cap right here goes around the neck of the cylinder right here Excuse me for the video. <clears throat> you need to pry this cap off in order to expose the top half of the cylinder, which is right here. And the reason being is you need to be able to put a pick Hold on one second. Here we go. You need to be able to put a pick in this section of the cylinder, the housing, so you can push back the detent. I'm sorry, the uh, uh, not detent, but it's a uh, what do you call it? It's a plate that holds it in place. I can't remember the name of it, having a brain fart right now. But when I go to the cylinder, I'll show you what I'm talking about. All you're doing is pushing pushing back that plate so it can actually cause the cylinder to turn clockwise. <clears throat> the plate <clears throat> if you can see it carefully is this component here right here is what we're pushing on so we're going to be pushing that in so that can move freely so we can actually get this to turn freely when we push push the key in it's not going to cause it to move properly but by us pushing it in it gives us the capability to turn the cylinder like so it's going to be sitting in the ignition like this and we just want to put the pry bar on the inside here. You can use a pick. Um, I got one of my old uh, rake tools that I used to pick the uh, cylinders with. And I just sharpen the tip up a little bit to get that point situated. And all I do is push this retainer here. There you go. I push this retainer in and use this jiggler key to turn it. As I'm doing so, it turns to the on position. Once I get it to the on position, I just go ahead and remove it so I can turn it completely, put the jiggler key back in, and all I have to do now is push this release bar here inward. Now, the release bar, is gonna be right here 
down in this hole. So what you want to do is take your pick as you're turning to the on position and hold it there. You want to slightly back off the on position a little bit and you want to feel for it. You'll start to feel that inside this hole it will get a little bit stronger and it'll stick. Just lift your pick up slightly, turn the key back and push that hole, push that uh, release down and the cylinder comes right out. Now this is helpful for any time you have to do like a re-key or you got to replace the cylinder with no key um, or, or if you actually need to uh, make a key from doing a lost key. <clears throat> and once you get ready to do everything else, just uh, do everything in reverse. That way you can go ahead and put everything back together the way it is and make sure you get the B111 chip key because that's what it calls for. It's the Z shaped, the Z keyway. Um, and just start the programming process from there. If this video has been helpful for you, like always, like and subscribe to the channel. <clears throat> I'm going to leave my email in the comments below. And if there's any questions, concerns, or videos you want to see, go ahead and leave them in the comments as well. Or you can take my email and go ahead and email me. And we'll go ahead and discuss whatever needs to be uh, worked on. Like always, thank you for tuning in. Check out more videos as they come.